Bibliophiles of the internet, it is finally that time. Today is the day I share my favorite books I read in 2023. As I always say, this video is very much a labor of love. It's a lot of planning, a lot of work, and it's a million tiny pieces that finally come together to make what you're gonna see today. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm not a top 10 person. I don't rank the books I read. I don't split up my favorite books by genre or any other subcategories. Barring any clerical errors on my part, this is every single one of my favorite books from last year listed in chronological order from the start of the year to the end. Besides being the books I love the most, the only other criteria for this list is that these are all books that I personally read in 2023. It doesn't matter if they were published in 2023, before 2023, or even after 2023. As long as I personally read something and loved it in 2023, it counts. In case you're new here, I do my best books of the year video somewhat differently. I don't give synopses. I won't tell you the genre. I'm not going to give mini reviews. I will tell you the title, the author, and something I've personally taken away from each and every book. And the last explanatory thing I will say is that unfortunately we once again find ourselves in the middle of yet another publishing related boycott. Last year you might remember it was the HarperCollins boycott, this year it is the marketing boycott regarding St. Martin's Press and all of their related imprints. If you want to learn more about this boycott and how you can support it, I will link the Readers for Accountability page down below. I do have two titles that fall under that boycott, so I will name them, but the covers will be obscured by the Readers for Accountability logo, and I will not be giving testimonials for those books. Again, it's important to bear in mind that this is a marketing boycott, not a consumer boycott. I still recommend these titles. You can read them, you can buy them, you can borrow them from your library, you can talk about them privately with friends, you just can't review or post about them online at this time. So hopefully that makes sense. Just like I said last year, yes, it does suck. I wish I didn't have to censor my end of the year content just because publishing companies can't seem to get it together. However, I do not blame boycott organizers for the inconvenience because I think it's far more inconvenient to be contending with pinkwashing and Zionism in review and review adjacent spaces. So with all of that said and all of that in mind, let's talk about my favorite books of 2023. Starting with The World and All That It Holds by Alexander Himon. Even amidst all the horrific ways the world seems to be breaking and constantly ending around us, our willingness to fight for love, to remember the ways that love has changed changed us, and to create a place where that love can somehow exist despite everything is the most human thing about us. Godly Heathens by H. E. Edgman. Heart Haunt Havoc by Fredis Moon. It's a tremendous act of love and vulnerability to refuse to run from the things haunting us, and instead stand our ground and say that there's something deeply wrong happening, and I have to find a way to change it so that I can survive. This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. The concept of control can only ever be an illusion. The idea that we should know exactly where our lives are going, what's supposed to happen, how it's supposed to happen, when it's supposed to happen, isn't a comfort. It's a curse. No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. If our world is allegedly so broken that the majority of people agree to be terrible to each other, to prioritize their own self-preservation and comfort over everything and everyone else, then we can also just as easily agree to be better, to imagine and build a better world for ourselves. Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Adia Brenya. You don't have to be a criminal in the eyes of the law in order to be corrupt. Our complicity, whether willing or benign, in allowing the continuance of systemic injustice is its own form of violence. A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. Sometimes the most powerful thing we can do is not to destroy the past or the things we're ashamed of, but to confront them and name them and force them to stand in the light. The Beautiful Something Else by Ash Van Otterloo. We move through trauma, not just to put it behind us, but so that we can learn how to instead move towards the kinds of beauty, safety, wonder, and freedom that exist and prevail beyond its restrictive confines. Several People Are Typing by Calvin Kisulke. While technology could very well be the pathway to mankind's destruction, it's also become an essential component of what it means to be human, part of how we cope with this brilliantly bizarre world of ours and how we try to forge meaningful connections with other humans who are also trying and failing to make sense of our impossible, horrendous, wonderfully inexplicable shared existence. 
Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. Our willingness to help each other and to overcome the forms of injustice that are fundamentally embedded into our deeply unjust world will always be stronger than any obstacles we face. Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. The thing about life is that it always goes on, even as it's lost, even as everything changes around us, even when we can't make sense of it, even when we get lost in the not knowing. But instead of using that fact to render everything pointless, it can also be a comfort to know that we can constantly find new ways to exist. Two Can Play That Game by Leanne Young. Failure is an integral and inescapable part of life. Failing allows us the chance to learn how we can love others and ourselves better, how we can live our lives better, and how we can grow towards the people and things and dreams that we actually need in our lives. Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H. We shouldn't have to change ourselves or sacrifice parts of ourselves to fit into a predetermined narrative. We are allowed to brazenly write the entirety of ourselves into all the places we have ever been erased. Lucky Red by Claudia Cravens. Sometimes we forget how easily the world can turn its back on us, especially when we're seen as disposable in some kind of way. And that's why it's important to remember that we all have the agency to forcefully take our fate into our own hands and decide what we will make of ourselves on our own terms. Our Hideous Progeny by C. E. McGill. Hope really is the mother of all creation, and sometimes it's all we can do to continue hoping that we will be allowed to create and recreate ourselves over and over again as many times as it takes, even in a world that could never anticipate the profuseness of our existence. Unmasked by the Marquess by Cat Sebastian. What we believe and the ways we move through the world should ultimately be in service of the people we want to become. Those values and beliefs shouldn't be limitations on the boundaries of our existence, but rather tools that we can use to carve out a future for ourselves. He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. Believing in something, no matter how fervently or earnestly, does not always make it true. Whatever belief we hold can only ever be as strong as the actions we take and choices we make to uphold it. We Could Be So Good by Kat Sebastian. Sometimes we tell ourselves that it's too much work for other people to love us, but that's not true. Our lives should be spent loving ourselves and those around us with honesty and ferocity, learning how to be generous in the ways we share ourselves with each other, and that should be the standard, not the exception. Mammoths at the Gates by Nee Vol. No person's life can ever be boiled down to a single story. We are all constantly changing alongside an ever-changing world, and it's vital for us to try and honor that fluidity and that malleability in the ways we see each other and understand each other. Beating Heart Baby by Leo Min. The past is constantly happening to us, for better or worse. We have to use the past to spur ourselves onwards towards the future instead of letting it become an obstacle that keeps us from that future. I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me by Jameson Shea. We can never be the truest, fullest, most unfettered versions of ourselves by taking the path of least resistance. A future that doesn't ruffle some feathers, make some people uncomfortable, disrupt someone else's prescribed notion of peace and normalcy is not a future worth having. Something Like Home by Andrea Beatriz Arango. It's possible to want something better for the people around us who are healing in their own ways while also wanting something better for ourselves. When it comes to hope, we don't have to choose. Witch of Wild Things by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. Love means never having to hide yourself, never having to uncomplicate yourself for someone else's sake, letting the unsavory, unlikable, unlovable, unflattering parts of yourself be seen and known and appreciated for all the ways they make you, you. The Death I Gave Him by MX Liu. There are so many ways we leave marks on the world. We could be remembered as someone great or as someone who did terrible things. So we have to try and make the things we do matter in some way while we still can. The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. Love is a promise that we make to each other, a promise that we will keep searching for each other in the void, that we will keep reaching out for each other even when we don't know if anyone is reaching back, and that the indelible marks we make on each other can always be traced back to the source of our souls. 
by any other name by Aaron Cotter. Trust is not a reward that once earned is yours forever. It's an ongoing conversation. It's a negotiation. It's an offering. And the question isn't just whether we can trust the people around us, but how can we learn to trust ourselves? Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. Our grief doesn't have to be pretty or easily digestible. When we go to such great lengths to mask the ugliness and monstrosity of our worst emotions, that in itself is an unnatural act of monstrosity. The Imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles by Malka Older. We tend to romanticize the concept of struggle, this idea that if we obtain or achieve something after fighting our way towards it, it'll be that much sweeter. But maybe it's better to just enjoy the things and people we have in our lives while we have them, instead of putting up roadblocks between ourselves and our joy. Dear God, Dear Bones, Dear Yellow by Noor Hindi. We shouldn't have to negotiate away fundamental parts of ourselves in order to experience and benefit from all the joys, resources, and opportunities that life has to offer. It's worth it to cultivate, excavate, and nurture those parts of ourselves that don't seem to fit into the greater narrative and carry them with us anyways. Valid by Chris Bergeron, translated by Natalia Hero. Just by being our contradictory, complex, unacceptable, unpalatable, undefinable selves, just by embracing the multiplicity inherent to the human experience, we will always be far more powerful than the systems attempting to contain us. Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. What matters is not how we survive, but that we survive, and that we keep surviving, even and especially when we're not expected to. To Shape a Dragon's Breath by Monoquil Black Goose. There is more than one way to know things, to learn things, to feel things, and when we place hard limits on the way things should be done or the way people should be, we cut ourselves off from our ability to access and imagine all the beautiful different possibilities of existing. Against the Loveless World by Susan Abelhawa. We deserve to live, and we deserve to enjoy and experience the feeling of liberation simply based on the fact of our own existence. There is no litmus test for how human or how real we have to be in order for us to be free. The Borrow a Boyfriend Club by Paige Powers. We spend so much time trying to make ourselves into what we think other people need us to be or want us to be, but no amount of outward validation will make our lives worthwhile if we can't sit with ourselves in the quiet moments and accept who we become and who we are still becoming. The Prospects by K.T. Hoffman. The ability to dream, not only for ourselves, but for those around us, is a muscle that so many of us don't even know how to use. But we are all deserving of joy and deserving of greatness that we can't even begin to imagine. We deserve to dream the big dreams for ourselves. And finally, A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. So those are all of my favorite books from 2023. Again, barring any titles I accidentally forgot, which is entirely possible. I am human. I do make mistakes. But I believe those are all my top books that absolutely stood out to me the most. If you've read any of these books, if they're on your radar, let's talk about them down below in the comments. And of course, I'd love to hear about your own favorite books. So feel free to drop those in as well. That is everything I had to share for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, educate yourself, be kind to yourself, take care of yourself, and other and I will catch you on the flip side of the page.